Cluster SSH, or CSSH is a utility that allows you to manage multiple servers over SSH from a single administration console. It was originally designed to work with multiple nodes that make up a HPC high -performance computing cluster. These nodes are usually configured identically, therefore requiring the same administrative command to be run on each node. Using cluster SSH allows an administrator to type a command into a single console and have it replicated over many systems. As a sysadmin this tool can be a huge time saver. In this article we will discuss how to install, configure and use cluster SSH. Using cluster SSH is simple and can be done with no initial configuration. You can call the utility by typing CSSH, followed by the hosts you want to connect to. In this case we are using the username at host syntax. As you can see, without any configuration we were able to open two sessions. If you are using the same username for both systems, the command can be simplified by using the minus L option followed by the desired username. You can specify different usernames for each host by repeating the username at host syntax. The first line in each window shows you the username and command used to connect to that host. By clicking in each window, it allows you to type command to that specific host. Click back into the admin console to type in both sessions. Here we see the username is the same on all systems. If your username is the same on all systems, you can exclude the username entirely. The user-specific configuration can be generated by simply running CSSH without any arguments. On first run, cluster SSH generates a hidden directory inside the user's home directory called .cluster SSH. This is where your clusters, tags and config files will go. HPC cluster administrators often have very complex configurations that involve several different files, tags, and options. Such a complex configuration is outside the scope of this article. Cluster SSH can be configured through its global configuration files, or user-specific configuration files. Both files use the same format, the only difference is one affects all users and the other is specific to one user. For this tutorial we will be making all changes to the user configurations. The cluster file format is simply a tag, or cluster name, followed by the name of the hosts in that cluster, each separated by a space. For an example, let's say we have four servers. Two are development servers and two are production servers. We can specify the tag dev and then list the development servers. Then do the same for the production servers with the tag prod. This is the dev tag, it is effectively the name of a cluster of systems. These are the names of the systems that are associated to the dev tag. Now that our clusters file is configured, we can use the dev tag as an argument to connect to all systems associated with that tag. Specifying the username inside the clusters file is not necessary. We can use the minus L option on the command line in conjunction with a tag to connect to a cluster of systems. The tag file uses the reverse format of the clusters file. In the tags file, you have a host followed by one or more tags, each separated by a space. 
This allows for more granular control over the clusters. In this example, let's say we want to group servers by their OS and location. We could start the line with a host, then list the tags that host should be associated with. This allows us to easily specify a single host as a member of several different tags. Here we start the line with a host, followed by two tags. One tag describes the operating system and one tag describes the location. This is the host, again, the username is optional. These are the tags that the host is associated with, they describe the operating system and location. Now we can use these tags to connect to a group of machines. For example, let's connect to all the systems associated with the CentOS tag. Now let's connect to all the systems associated to the Philly tag. There you have it. We effectively made each host a member of two different clusters. One groups servers by operating system and the other by location. We can now connect to all the hosts in the Philadelphia data center by using the Philly tag. This is a great way to logically group servers for different administrative tasks. The main configuration file provides a method for overriding the default behavior of the program. The format is similar to the other configuration files, one option and value per line. A default configuration is generated for you the first time you run the CSSH command. If you want to change any default behavior, you simply edit the file and change the settings. The automatically generated file has all the configuration options inside of it already, but they are commented out. Let's uncomment auto close and change its value from default 5 to 2. Now let's change the admin console position to place it where we like. Lastly, let's hide the admin console menu for a nice clean look. That's how easy it is to configure cluster SSH. There are several menu items across the top of the administration console. They hold some useful options that will increase your cluster SSH efficiency. In the file menu you will find show history. Its purpose is obvious, but its location is very inconspicuous. This will drop a little window down and show you the history of commands typed. The hosts menu has options to make certain windows or sessions active or inactive. At the very bottom of this menu there is also a list of currently opened hosts which you can toggle active or inactive. Setting a host to inactive keeps the session open, but anything you type in the admin console will not be sent to that session. It also provides options like retile windows which will realign the windows if you moved them, added, or removed hosts. The send menu allows you to send things like remote host name, username, random number, etc. These items could be different in each session so this simplifies this action. Optionally this menu can be altered by adding a send menu file. Cluster SSH is an incredibly powerful tool for system administration. Even now as we move on to tools like Puppet and Ansible for configuration management, I still find uses for good old CSSH. In this article we covered most everything you need to get started. We discussed installing, configuring, and basic usage of cluster SSH as well as some usage examples. For more in-depth coverage of options and examples see the text version of this tutorial at www.putorius.net. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and stay connected by following us on Facebook and Twitter.